guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So I'm super excited. I'm here with yet another one of those gorgeous collage masterboards, um, you know, just using those complete book pages. It was Joey Defee's idea. I can't get enough of these. I absolutely love them. And, you know, and I've said all this before, but what an awesome way to use up some book pages. So I'm here with this. I've also brought along a bunch of blue themed um, ephemera pieces. So I've got blue and neutrals here, a combination of kind of both. And I've also brought along, if I just put these to one side, I've also brought along my heavy gesso and a couple of acrylic paint, um, you know, colours in blue shades. So I've never done this before, but I'm going to attempt to colour my gesso into sort of shades of blue. I've got one of my stencils here and I'm going to just stencil onto the collage, you know, background in random, you know, random areas. And um, yeah, I mean, hopefully in shades of blue. So hopefully we're going to end up with a really gorgeous, very blue themed piece. As I say, I have not ever um, coloured gesso before. I have seen obviously other people do that. So I know that it is something that you can do. So it's just fingers crossed really that hopefully I'm going to, going to get on okay with the, um, with the colouring of the gesso, but like I say, never done it before. So this is a first, this is a first for me. So it's a case of definitely fingers crossed. Right, now these are some um, acrylic paints from um, De La Rowney and I don't know whether that's how you pronounce that, to be honest. I'm just going to mix them in with the gesso to create some lovely shades of blue. And I've brought along a dark blue and this sort of you know brighter shade which will hopefully then you know between the two come out with quite a nice shade but I'm just going to mix it first just with that dark one and see how that looks oh my gosh that's a beautiful color isn't it oh that's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous okay I think I need some more more dark blue actually because it's now it's now going quite pale obviously because I've got quite a bit of gesso I guess, in relation to the colour, you know, the blue. So let's just oops, squeeze that out. Oops. Let's hope I don't just split the uh, tube. I could probably do with, a, you know, making the um, making that hole a bit bigger for the paint to squeeze out of. OK. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's not really colouring enough, is it? So let's just make that a bit bigger. Oh, wow. Well, now it's huge. Now it's huge. This is just how things seem to go with me. I'm one extreme to the other. One minute I can't get it to come out. And the next minute, wow, we've got like a whole great big blob. Although, to be honest, you know, I'm not worried because, you know, that might still not be quite enough. But anyway, so this is heavy gesso. It's, um, you know, heavier than kind of obviously the thin, more liquidy sort of gesso. So, I mean, hopefully this is going to, going to be good. Mm, I have to say, I'm still thinking it needs to go darker than that, but let me just pull in a couple of my blue pieces. Mm. What do we think? What do we think? Thinking a bit darker still. I don't think I'm going to need this bright blue at all because to be honest that bright blue is actually pretty similar to the colour that it's you know that it's mixed into so far which is the colour I'm sort of saying I don't want so yeah I don't think I'm going to need that colour at all right okay I'm going to call that a day because otherwise I'm going to just be here all day and as you can see I'm just getting a bigger and bigger and bigger amount here so um yeah let's just go for this to be honest because uh, I don't want to just be here endlessly mixing the paint. Right, let's get, I've got my um, card here, which this is the method that I used to spread my gesso recently, which I actually thought worked quite well for me. Um, I found it sort of easier almost than a spreader. So yeah, fingers crossed. But I mean, I'm not by any means saying that this is, you know, the best method or anything like that. And of course, just use, you know, what method suits you best. Okay. 
and I don't want to have kind of a complete, um, you know, uh, stenciled background or anything. I just want to have some random patches. So I'm just going to kind of randomly go around my master board, just filling in, you know, odd, odd sections, I think. Oh, it's quite um, quite bright still, which that's not really kind of how I'd hoped I've got to be truthful, but but never mind, we'll go for it now. Yeah, I mean, I really should have continued mixing that because, um, you know, this is not at all the colour blue that I was, you know, looking for, really. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So we'll just we'll just go for it now. So that's those sections. I just want to kind of do a little bit up here and then I'm going to turn my piece of paper round so that I can fit it onto the onto the desk because, you know, my desk's not the biggest. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely not going to fit it on here with this here beside me, if you see what I mean, with my gesso patch. It will just end up dragging into the gesso, which, of course, I don't really want. Oh! That's quite nice, isn't it? You know, just completely by accident, but picked up some of the um, the stencil, you know, where it's getting kind of a bit painty on the back now. Just picked up some by accident, but yeah, it actually looks really cool. Okay, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely regretting not mixing more of the dark colour in. Um, yeah, because this is not really kind of working for me. But I'm hoping that we'll be able to, you know, pull it back when we, I don't know, add some distress ink and things like that. You know, hopefully we'll be able to get it looking a bit more vintagey then. No guarantees, obviously. Okay. I'm just going to fill in here. Actually, I'm just going to sort of lay it there. Probably smudging the paint now all over the entire thing, but... You know, never mind. I mean, because this is just a background, so, I mean, at the end of the day... If something, you know, is not looking great, it doesn't really matter because we can just cover it up with whatever we're going to be gluing on the top. So, you know, it's all good. doesn't really matter. Okay. Right, move that down a bit and we'll just do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and dry this with my heat tool and then I'll be back. Right, I'm back. Now, what else I actually did was I'm just not really feeling very happy with it. It, to me, does not look very vintage at all because this blue is just much too bright. So what else I did, I've just sprayed the whole lot with some coffee, um, you know, coffee dye mixture, which is just here, just in my little spray bottle. So I've just sprayed the whole thing. I've dried it off. I mean, it's not 100% dry, but, you know, again, as I always say, it will do. Um, so I'm just going to just get applying some random bits and pieces onto here. So I've just happened to have this stamped piece from, you know, some bits that I had done in a previous video. So I'm just going to 
just get you know gluing and sticking things down as and where so let's just pop this one down here oh it's getting really hot up here now so i'm going to have to uh take my cardigan off in a minute i think so i've got my sleeves rolled up at the moment but yeah it's actually getting very hot okay so we can have that one there okay and then what else have I got? So I've got this little piece here. So I'm just going to cut this out. And these are just stamped images onto my coffee dye background page. The coffee dye background page comes with lots of my background paper kits. You know, they're, they're the same um, coffee dye background page. It's not like you get different ones. Okay. that out and then we can have that somewhere now with regards to my blue pieces so I'm just going to kind of you know just get sticking them down really as and where I kind of fancy um, but again I may want to you know break some of that bright blue up because for me that just feels yeah it's feeling way too way too bright blue so just got sort of odds and ends really here that are just laying about from different you know different projects um and I'm just going to kind of randomly glue some bits down yeah kind of wishing that I hadn't um mixed the blue with the gesso actually and I wish that I'd just just used the paint because to be honest if I'd just used the paint pretty sure it would have looked you know a much better colour for what I'm you know what I was wanting to do but anyway it's it's fine we'll we'll go for it as is um you know like all these things there's no such thing as it you know not working because we can always kind of hopefully <laughs> hopefully adapt it and make it work I mean that is obviously uh, hopefully there's no guarantees obviously so yeah I've got this piece here again this one I'm going to just ink up because you know it's just looking a little bit too bright so just ink around there okay you know just really hoping to just get some bits down stuck down onto here and I'm thinking we're going to stitch this one on the sewing machine. Um, I don't think I've done that with these collage master boards so far. So I'm thinking that would be, you know, something slightly different to do. I'm pretty sure that Joey did stitch hers, to be fair. So, I mean, I'm not kind of taken away from what she did. She, you know, she, I'm pretty sure, did stitch her pieces in the first place. So, yeah. I'm not kind of doing anything that's never been done before. I'm doing something that I've never done before. So again, just going to ink this little frame up. Now, these little frames and pieces, these are from my new um, Perfect Pockets set four. Um, at the point where I'm filming this video, these are currently not in my shop. Hopefully, by the time that this video goes up, they will then be in my shop, um, is the plan. So yeah, hopefully, you know, by this point, they are actually already in my shop. Just trying to decide which way to put that. So, yep, just slid it up a little bit. Okay, got the Eiffel Tower. Always love an Eiffel Tower image. And yeah, I mean, most of these are from the Perfect Pockets um, set four. Uh, not this, I think. And yeah, I mean, obviously the stamped images aren't, but I will tell you kind of the bits that are and the bits that aren't as we go through. Okay. So, I mean, I guess, you know, also this is quite a good, um, you know, illustration of those Perfect Pocket sets. You don't have to only use your you know, the ephemera pieces as part of the perfect pockets. You can obviously incorporate them into, you know, loads of different sort of projects and things. Because, I mean, effectively, you know, you've got just a really lovely bunch of fussy cuts. 
in different styles and sizes. So, you know, of course you can then, you know, they can work with all sorts of different things that you're doing. Yep, let's have that umbrella there. Okay. I'm just going to get a um, dry wipe because I've forgotten to bring one along and now I could really do with it for mopping up. Hold on. Right, so I just got up to get my dry wipe. I just placed a couple more things down. So I haven't glued them down yet, but there's this one, which is just a stamped piece, but I thought looked pretty cute over here like that and then this Eiffel Tower which again is also in that perfect pockets kit but as you can see it's bigger and obviously it's in this lovely darker sort of color so yeah I'm going to have that there with my wipe now that I've got one. I've got this little shoe, which is super cute. Oh, it's nice there, isn't it? Just ink that a bit. Just inking these really, because obviously where I've cut them out, it's, um, you know, it just helps to tidy them up really. So. Okay. I mean, you do realise what's going to happen here, don't you? I can see it happening already because I've gone from now really not liking this at all because it was looking such bright blue to actually, I, it's really growing on me. And um, yeah, I'm not going to want to, not going to want to take it to the sewing machine in case I ruin it. And then I'm definitely not going to want to use it, am I? I'm going to want to hoard it. So you can kind of see that happening already, can't you? just a, a common theme there that seems to to go on constantly okay I might put her there I could have her over there oh I'm gonna have her here I think so please excuse the back obviously that's where I printed multiple times you know when trying to get my digis you know as as I want them obviously you have to print them out tons of times so, okay, she looks pretty there, doesn't she? Right, let's see what else that I bought along. So I had bought this um, dictionary definition. Actually, I have to be honest, I'm probably not really loving that. Uh, I have got a little postage stamp. That's quite nice. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. Actually, I'm quite liking it in most places that I put it. Um, it's going to be one of those where actually it looks looks pretty good everywhere. Oh, I like it there. Yeah. So again, let's just attach that. This one I had cut before I got my hair thin in scissors, which of course do that fantastic stamp type edge but I didn't really have enough edge left to recut them or recut it, if you see what I mean. But anyway, it looks fine. You know, it looks fine as it is. Okay. Could have... Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Let's just have that there. This is just one of my book plates. Oh, and that lady here... She is from my platform number two um, ephemera kit. So, yeah, if you were looking for her, that's where she can be found. Okay. Right, wondering whether I would like any of these butterflies. Let's just, again, just ink these up. them into two because then 
we have double the fun. We can use them, you know, twice. So I'm going to put that one there. Okay. And then this one. Sometimes it's really hard to decide, isn't it, where things look the best. I'm just going to ink up this butterfly. So again, this butterfly is from the Perfect Pockets um, set four. It might be that it's not overly going to show up on here because it's too blue, if you see what I mean. I guess I could have it there. Let's have that over there. That's quite nice. Oh, and also I've got some frames here, so let's just just check those out and see how they would look. Oh, that's minuscule there, so I've got some bigger frames. So again, just going to ink around this where I've done some shoddy cutting. Okay. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, quite like that. So just attach that one there. I quite like cutting the frames in half, as you know, but actually I thought that whole frame could be used there. And, you know, at the moment, I've got no plan as to what I'm going to do with this sheet. So, you know, maybe when I come to use it, it will be cut, um, you know, maybe not in half, but certainly into a section. Um, you know, don't know till I come to use it really how how it's going to be used. Okay, I've got my butterflies here. I did like those on top of it, so just pop those down. So I hope everyone's having a good day. Hope you're uh, doing some lovely crafting projects. Have you made one of these, um, you know, entire book page masterboards? They are like my current addiction. I absolutely love, 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 love them. They are just so cool. They really are like super addictive to do, I have to say. Yeah, they're really, really, really fun. Now, again, this is one of those pieces that actually looks pretty cool everywhere it goes. Um, I think that's the thing with frames, to be honest. They just look really epic, you know, everywhere. So I'll just put that one down there. Okay, right that one let's fill in some of these gaps so I've got this blue window I don't know whether you know it's kind of a totally wrong kind of blue wrong shade of blue might be or whether it would look quite nice once it's once it's stuck down Because I don't quite know how I'm going to be using this board, it sort of makes it slightly trickier to actually use it in a few places, actually. But, um, yeah. Oh, that's quite nice over there. Do we like the window on top of the frame or the frame on top of the window? I think the frame on top of the window, so. Oh, my goodness, dropping everything now. Oops. Okay, just ink this. So this is a stamped piece. Um, stamped it a really long time ago, just been kind of laying around on my desk and things. So I couldn't tell you, I'm afraid, what stamp it was or anything like that. But yeah, a very old stamp set. Um, I'm thinking it might have been some sort of wedding stamp set. Um, Kind of thinking maybe Forever Friends, you know, the bears. I kind of feel like it could have been something like that. But I, yeah, I wouldn't swear to it because it's so old, I'm afraid. So that looks good there. Right, just got a few more bits and pieces that I've brought along. Oops, okay. Right. So I've got this one, which this was part of a snippet roll that I had made previously. 
And I thought, oh, there's no reason why we couldn't actually put a part of a snippet roll onto here. So obviously as it was in the blues, I thought I would pull it along or, you know, bring it along and see how it would look. Don't know. Oh, maybe there. Yeah, maybe there. Or could go there. I think up there. So I'm just going to pop that down. I have to say, this is um, this was a snippet roll that I made a few weeks ago. I have been kind of hoarding it because um, I loved how it looked so much. So yeah, I think this is like the first bit that I've actually used from that snippet roll because I had used all my bright umbrellas on it. And so there were obviously lots of different sort of looks along the snippet. And um, yeah, I just loved it so much that I've been holding it, haven't wanted to use it, you know me. So, yeah, I thought it was time, time to finally use it. Right, should we have another umbrella here? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. When I actually said about doing a blue one, this was not really kind of my... Um, you know, what I was meaning, I was actually meaning really kind of blue, blue florals, like the pink floral one that I did, but I just, I couldn't resist doing this, to be honest, it's, um, because I had quite a few blue pieces, um, yeah, they kind of caught my eye, and I thought, oh, I'm going to do one a bit like this, so, okay, so that's there, now I've got a little, another butterfly. And the word special. We could have that like that. That's quite nice, isn't it? Yep, let's do that. Okay. Ink up that butterfly wherever it's actually gone. Oh, there it is. Honestly, sometimes you just can't see for looking. You know, these things, they kind of drop onto your desk and... <laughs> I mean, actually, you're lucky if you can ever find them again in, in my desk's case, but... Mm. Yeah, let's have that butterfly down there. Oh, actually, I'm just now thinking... <gasps> Look at that! How gorgeous does that butterfly look up there? I just kind of had a change of heart. As soon as I went to glue it down, I thought, oh, I'm just going to try it up there and look at how awesome that looks. Love how that looks. Right, okay, so we've got this butterfly here that's kind of still loitering around. Need to just pop that somewhere. Uh, I mean, I don't have to, to be honest, but, you know, I think. Yeah, I think somehow like that. Okay, maybe there. Okay. Like that. Okay, and... Right, what other pieces have I brought along? So I've got some of my little lady lockets, um, which I thought might be quite nice on here. I mean, actually, they're quite nice there, aren't they? I don't know. Where else they could go? You know, because I know that I keep saying this, you know, I don't know how I'm going to be tearing this or using this or cutting it. So I'm kind of thinking... You know, I must try and have maximum um, options, I guess. Because, you know, until I come to use it, I don't really know how it's going to, you know, be broken apart, as it were. Oh my goodness, they look stunning on there, don't they? So I'm just going to ink this little shaped piece up as well. So they are my Lady Lockets um, set two. I'm thinking, could they have a bit of a shaped, shaped piece coming out? It's quite nice, doesn't it? 
I mean, this is feeling to me a little bit like it's going to go cluster, you know, clustery um, when I kind of tear this apart, but you know, it might not. It might not, um, you know, until we do come to use it, I'm not quite sure how it will be. Maybe they should go down there. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm just going to stick those down there. I don't know how I'm going to stitch this either. I mean, I fancy stitching it, but um, yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to stitch through through like the topper pieces, i.e. you know, these thicker pieces, or I don't know, I don't know. We won't know till I get to the sewing machine, to be honest. Let's hope I know then. I mean, there's no guarantees I'm going to even know when I get to the sewing machine. Ah, we'll just have to see what happens. You know, the sewing machine will just have to um, decide for me. Okay. Right, so I've still got a few spaces on here, which, you know, I mean, sounds a bit strange, but I want to obviously fill in, really, as many of the little spaces as I can. Um, so I've just got one or two more bits. I've got this little banner, which again, this is from the Perfect Pockets set two. Oh, that's quite nice there. Oh, that is nice there. Yeah, I love, love, love that there. Yeah, I'm going to have to be a bit careful when I stitch this because, um, yeah, I could find I end up going, you know, like here, straight through that bird's face and things like that. And of course, I have done things like that before. Now, I've got this um, bird cage here, which this is not one of my pieces. This is, I think this was a Kayser Craft, um, you know, piece, which I've been hoarding for years. And what's actually happened is it's now got damaged on my desk. You can probably see it's now kind of tinged pink. Which is a shame because to be fair it would have looked really good in this space if it weren't for the pink so I'm just gonna have a look and see you know whether I could could get around the pink let me just see what butterflies I've got that I could stick over that pink uh, to just cover it up a bit I mean, that's quite a huge butterfly, isn't it? But let me have a look. Okay. Just having a look in my little pot of butterflies that I keep beside me. Um, got this one. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Let me just ink this up. Okay. You know, I'm just going to pull these little thingamajigglies off. I know they are part of it, but, you know, I can't help but think it looks better without. I mean, probably not in real life, obviously, but, you know, in in this life, in this, in this um, page, I feel like it looks better without. Right. OK, let's just see whether we want anything else. Got, what have we got here? OK, no. Do I want any of my numbers on there? I'm not sure. Not sure, not sure. Uh, oh, it's so tough sometimes to decide what you actually want to put on things, isn't it? Um, I'm just literally having sort of a bit of a rummage on my desk, seeing whether I've got anything, you know, just floating around that would be ideal to use. Uh, what else have I got? And I've got these Abordian ladies. Oh, I've got another one of those lockets. Just never know what you're going to find when you rummage around on my desk, to be honest. 
could have another, another lady there. Let's just ink that up and see. Do I want to go for this? I mean, it's ridiculous because it's actually ruined, you know, where I've kind of left it, hoarded it on my desk for all that time. And still now, I'm questioning, do I want to use it? I mean, you know, what is wrong with me? I'm just going to cut it round because, again, it's one of those things that's been like kiss cut, you know, when I bought it. And um, obviously now that it's been wrecked a little bit, with whatever it was that it's picked up, some sort of pink ink or paint or whatever from my desk, it actually probably, you know, benefits from being cut out a bit better because that eliminates a little tiny bit of that pink. Right, I'm going to just, going to go for this because, you know, just, yeah, must make decisions and stick with them. Okay. And that butterfly is quite huge, isn't it, to be honest? Do we think it's too big? Maybe it is too big. Maybe it is. Let me just quickly check whether I've got any others. Oh, you know what else I've got? I've got one of my little ticket clusters. How does that look against the bird cage? Is that just like really weird? Uh, I don't mind it, actually. Mm -hmm. weird and plus I am going to be stitching around this so yeah I need to kind of keep that in mind because once I come to stitch it it might not be quite so ideal uh right okay so back to ramaging for butterflies um I have got these acetate ones which I could use one of those that's quite nice yeah I quite like that let's Let's just go for that. And I mean, obviously, you know, acetate can be a bit tricky to stick down, but don't forget I am going to be stitching. So I can, uh, you know, actually ensure that I stitch straight through the middle of that butterfly and then it will be, you know, properly attached. Okay, right. I've just got this space here. So I'm just going to ink up this locket piece. Okay. I mean, that one's not such a good, you know, match as this one. When I put this one there straight away, I thought, oh, that looks awesome. This one, I'm not so much having that feel. Uh, okay, let me just see whether I have anything else whatsoever that I might want to use in that gap. Again, just rummaging around on my desk for anything at all that might be good. I'm looking in my little tray that um, I was gifted by Brenda. I mean, that tray is such a godsend. I just literally, you know, have such a lovely bunch of things in there. And it's so handy to just have it right by my desk like that. Uh, right, just reaching down, because I was also gifted this little booklet in a Happy Mail to keep ephemera in. So I have started, um, you know, filling it with ephemera pieces. Obviously I have got, you know, I've got a little way to go, but yeah, I have made a start and um, it's really wonderful. It's a really good size. Great to be able to just kind of take downstairs of an evening, you know, and cut out some bits and pieces or, you know, use to make some bits and pieces without having to take too much stuff downstairs with me. Because, you know, us crafters, we never know when to stop, do we? Just going to cut this piece out and just see... This piece, I'm feeling like this might get lost on the page, if you see what I mean. It might not really be quite bright and vibrant enough, but let's have a look. Okay. Okay. 
Okie dokie, nearly done. Right, I will obviously ink that up and we'll see then how it looks. Because like I say, it may just be that it blends in way too much and, you know, isn't then particularly visible. Oh, it looks all right, actually. Yeah, looks better than I thought it would. So I've got that. I'm just now wondering what else to put with that. So again, just see. I've got some frames here. So I just wonder whether we might want to have like a frame coming out. That's quite nice, isn't it? Like I say, I mean, I love using frames and they just always look awesome. You know, always, always. Just, yeah, they have this really great quality about them that they just always bring something, you know, something different to pieces. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to pop that down like that. So let's just glue that down. And then I think I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and yeah, who knows what I'm actually going to be doing, how I'm going to be stitching, but just, um, yeah, just going to do some sort of random, random stitching around. And then it will probably be in a different video where, <laughs> where we'll decide what we're actually going to do with this. Haven't got a clue at this particular point. No clue whatsoever, but we will see. Hopefully we will think of something to do with it. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the finished piece. I'm really liking it now. Um, I mean, I know that that blue was, you know, super bright, much brighter than I'd hoped, but, you know, hopefully it's going to look good once it's kind of torn down into chunks or cut down into chunks. It will hopefully, you know, bring the whole thing together. So I'm going to take it across to the sewing machine and... Um, yeah, I will see you guys another time when we will have a play and see what we're going to make from this. So thank you so much for joining me and have a great day, everyone. Thanks then. Bye.